Now, you know, there's times when we when we come on YouTube and we do certain types of teaching that people really want to hear and they respond to. And there's others that you may not get that kind of response. But I'm saying to myself, folks, if you knew the content or the story or what's in there, that would be such a inspiration and revelation to you. You'd be watching it. And so this is one of those that's like, well, I'm a good Christian, so I don't have any bad habits. But some people will watch it and some people may not. But my point is, listen to what I'm about to tell you, because there are strange habits of ineffective Christians. I'm a uh, pastor's son. I'm a fourth generation minister. And I have met literally hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people who consider to be Christians. And I would say that the majority of them are good, honest people that try to serve the Lord. They are not perfect people. I know of no one who is because everybody has a character flaws or weaknesses or things they struggle with. It could even be a temper, anger, something with the flesh, something like that. It doesn't have to be a specific sin. But the habits of some people, and I'm going to give these to you. Let's just get right into this. Um, you either have fruit or you don't, or you have results or you don't in your life. And I found out that people who are ineffective as Christians, number one, they do not know how to receive correction at all, that you cannot correct them. Uh, you will go to them and try to correct them. And it's always the other person's fault. I've actually known of people that would do something and they made it. They made a mistake. They made a big error and never. I'm telling you, in the, all the time I knew them, they were never able to say, I am wrong. I'm sorry. They will literally every time deflect it. Oh, it was her problem. Uh, she didn't keep the books right. She lost the receipt. I mean, it was just consistently blaming somebody else. And the thing you have to understand, listen to what the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 7, 28 through 29. So you shall say to them, this is a nation that does not obey the voice of the Lord their God, nor receive correction. Truth has perished and has been cut off from their mouth. Proverbs 23 and 14 says, correct a child and you will deliver his soul from hell. So children that aren't corrected are just rebellious and end up just in craziness. And I, I can tell you this, my dad wasn't mom as much, but dad corrected all of us kids, four of us. And, uh, you know, he believed in the stars and stripes, as some of you old timers know what I'm talking about. So anyway, uh, and I turned out well, I think. But it, it also says in Hebrews 12 and 5, despise not the chastening of the Lord, which is the Greek word. Uh, chastening is correction of God. So if you're if you're going to be effective, you're going to have to learn how to receive correction. Number two. The people that are ineffective that I've met do not know how to follow up with instruction. Hebrews chapter, uh, Proverbs chapter 8, 33. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Hear instruction, be wise and refuse it not. Now instruction, uh, you know, you can, you're the person who, let's say, that someone that's an administrative leader in over you uh, in a business or in a church minister, for example, or you have someone who is, uh, the, they call them the boss or the director, the CEO, whatever term you want to use. Many times they will give individuals on staff instruction. Now, the thing I get frustrated with is if you ever have to deal with someone that you give them an instruction and five hours later, they never did what you told them to do four hours before. And then, of course, the excuses start flying or they they you instruct them to do something and they start on it. And right in the middle, they just leave it and they never follow through. People who can receive correction, people who follow through, people who receive instruction are the people who usually if there's a job cut back, they might be the ones that keep their job because they are uh, have learned how to follow instruction. Number three, People that are highly ineffective, they know all the answers without knowing the questions. In other words, they are the type that will repeat second, third, and fourth hand information as though it is a fact. And yet they weren't in the situation. They weren't in the conversation. And if someone chooses to lie and lead into a mistruth, they're going to repeat that lie and mistruth as though it is truth. So in other words, they'll give you answers to questions that they don't even know what they are. They will give you answers. And I, I, I call them just know-it-alls. They think they know everything and they know it all and they only know what they've heard. They only know what they think they've seen. They only know what they perceive, etc. So if you're the kind of person that you're always trying to give answers to questions nobody asks, that's kind of a useless concept. Number four, 
People who are highly ineffective always talk more than they listen. Ecclesiastes 5 and verse 2 says this, Do not be rash with your mouth and let not your heart utter anything hastily before God. For God is in heaven and you are on the earth. Let your words be few. James said it this way, Let your yea be yea, and that means your yes be yes, and your no be no, lest you enter into condemnation. I want to give you a tweetable moment right now. Ready? You will never have to apologize for what you did not say. Let me say it again. You will never have to apologize for what you did not say. And the reason James said, let your yes be yes and no be no, lest you enter into condemnation, is because the more you talk, the more you speak, you are apt to say something that you should not say. You are apt to speak something out of turn or out of line. So if, you, if they say, what do you think about that? Say, I ain't got an opinion and let it go. Don't start elaborating why you don't have an opinion. Or if someone says, what do you think about that person? Well, it's just say, I don't know nothing about that person. What Did you hear such and such? No, and I don't care to. Just let it go because the more you talk, the more you can get yourself in trouble. Here's number five. They are high maintenance and low impact. High High maintenance and no impact. In other words, they want to consume your time. A lot of times years ago when I would travel as a young minister, there would be people during a four to five, seven week revival and they want to they come to the altar every night. They want prayer every night, which is fine. But then they want to talk to you after service. Brother Perry, I need to talk to you. I need to talk. And what I found out was it wasn't that they really wanted to talk to you. They simply wanted attention or they wanted to be felt like they were important because they were able to approach you or talk to you. So the point I want to make is that uh, uh, there are people in life that thrive on drama and they thrive on disaster. If there's not a drama, if they're not performing some kind of drama and focusing on them and their situation, or if they're not focusing on negativism or disaster, they can't even function in life. So you don't want to be a someone that's just high maintenance and you have a very low impact. You want to be low maintenance and high impact. Number number uh, six, <laughs> and I'm going to conclude with this. I actually had 10. I thought, no, that's a little too long. We're just going to throw some, some nuggets out there. Uh, they, the, the people that are very highly ineffective have a gift of go gossip and suspicion, but they call it a gift of discernment. Now, when somebody comes to you with information and they're gossiping and you go out and act like that God has showed you something, the Lord has revealed, that is just hokey and fakey and, and moronic, all right? Because God didn't show it to you. Somebody came to you and, and gave you information and suddenly, oh, I had a dream about this or I saw or God said, no, 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 please don't do that. That to me is a mockery toward the true power of the Holy Spirit who is who does show people things to come. Uh, the gift of gossip and suspicion is not the gift of discernment. In fact, there is th this idea of gift of discernment. That's not in the New Testament. What is in the New Testament is discerning of spirits. And there's the spirit of man, the spirit of God, uh, of God the spirits of Satan, demonic spirits. There's so many. There's three different levels of spirits. And it means to detect, to see into the realm of what is a in a person's heart. What is the Holy Spirit thinking? What is Satan planning? That is discerning of spirit. So my thing is that suspicion is not discernment and gossip is not a spiritual gift. And when you're tearing down people, God's not up there saying, come on, man, come on, justice. Let's go for it. Let them have it. Oh, kill him, kill him, kill him. Beat him in the head. God does not act that way. And people do and satanic powers do, but God himself is absolutely not in the belligerence of some people. Yet they think he is and they justify it because they want to feel good about what they're doing. Please remember this. You want to be a fruitful person. You want to be a person that is, that is highly favored of the Lord. And in order to do that, in order to be effective, you got to follow the Lord, serve him, do what he says, learn discipline, learn to speak when not to speak, learn to obey. When he speaks to you, be swift, uh, be swift to hear, but very, very slow to a sudden reaction. And all these things will help you. And, you know, if you really want to know how to live practically, read the book of Proverbs, all 31 chapters, and it will give you instruction from a man that's called one of the wisest men that ever lived, King Solomon, and also those who, who were under his administration as king. Well, my time's about up. Please keep watching a very brand new offer that we offer you if you love more teaching. And also subscribe to our channel, please. And keep up with us on our social media, YouTube channel, of course, as always. And when you, when you subscribe and hit the bell, you'll get a notification every time we're on. Thank you and watch this.
Our new offer is one of the most important prophetic teachings in the history of Manifest. Hebrew expert Bill Cloud and I teamed up on this 10-hour teaching to unlock the mysteries concealed in Israel's seven festivals. This album has 11 DVDs that are 21 30-minute lessons. They include illustrated messages and charts and pictures to enhance the details of the research. On the first DVD, I explain God's seven appointed festivals along with God's prophetic calendar. Bill Cloud then shows you a complete Passover Seder and explains the mystery of unleavened bread, unlocking its prophetic purpose, including the revelation of the Messiah. I then follow up taking you on a journey to illustrate the prophetic layers found in the Festival of First Fruits. Bill presents the fourth festival dealing with the powerful significance of Pentecost and its impact upon us today. On DVD number six, I will explain the three fall festivals and how they are yet to be fulfilled, showing how trumpets and the different shofar sounds on that day encrypt the mystery of Christ's return for His bride and the resurrection of the dead in Christ. Then I explain the biblical and ancient temple rituals of the sixth festival, Yom Kippur, and how they detail the great tribulation judgments yet to come. On DVD number nine, see Bill Cloud set up a sukkah, walking you step by step through the practical and prophetic meaning of Israel's seventh festival, also known as the Seasons of Our Joy. Among the live audience, the most talked about DVD was lesson number 10, where I examine Israel's three biblical harvest cycles that prophetically conceal the rapture, the tribulation, and the millennial kingdom through the festival harvest patterns of ancient Israel. The 11th and final DVD will stir your spirit as I reveal God's plan to restore His glory to the earth in these last days. This teaching introduces to the viewer unique Hebrew word studies, fresh biblical insight, unusual Jewish customs, and exciting prophetic truth, helping you to understand the future according to God's festival calendar. It was preached before a live audience of ministry partners, and this teaching was originally designed as a Perry Stone Bill Cloud ISO Bible course that normally is $150. However, right now you can receive the 11 DVDs as a limited time offer in an album for your donation of $75 or more. To order your set, go online at perrystone.org, call toll-free 1-888-21-BREAD, or write the ministry and send your donation of $75 or more to Perry Stone P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320. Now remember, when writing or calling, use offer number 11DVD101. Help keep manifest on the air. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. If you enjoyed this YouTube content, there's an important website you should know about, perrystone.org. Perrystone.org is an essential resource for the latest books, audiovisual presentations, and digital products from Perry Stone Ministries, resources that cover the same kinds of topics discussed in the program you just watched. Stop in and see all that's available at perrystone.org.